Hi everyone. Today I'm going to talk about partial fractions, which are often used when you want to integrate a polynomial divided by another polynomial. So suppose you're asked to integrate this expression. Not that hard to do once you understand how to use the logarithms, but that just makes 5 ln x minus 1 minus 2 ln of x plus 2 plus a constant. So that one's quite easy to integrate because you can just do each part separately. But what if instead of having that expression, um, we made a common denominator, so multiplied this one on top and bottom by x plus 2, and this one on top and bottom by x minus 1, then that would give you this. So this one is not so easy to integrate. If you were just told this one and not that one, you would have to first reverse that process and turn this back into this expression, and then you could integrate it. So that's what partial fractions is about, taking an expression like this and turning it into that. Okay, so let's imagine that you have to integrate this. The first thing you want to do is factorize the denominator. So that makes x minus 1 times x plus 2. And then what you want to do is imagine that you could write this expression as some number over x minus 1 plus some other number that we don't know yet over x plus 2. So the goal is to work out what these numbers a and b are. And the way you do that is just imagine what this makes when you add these up and make a common denominator. So multiply this one on top and bottom by x plus 2, and this one on top and bottom by x minus 1, and you get a times x plus 2 plus b times x minus 1 over this. And what we want is for this to be the same thing as this, no matter what x is. So we just need to work out what a and b need to be. So I'm just going to rewrite this without the denominator, because it'll be easier. So this is the same on both sides, so we can kind of ignore that. Now there's two main methods that you can use to figure out what a and b are. One is just to expand this and then collect um, you know, all the x's together and all the constants together. So you'll get a plus b times x plus 2a minus b, if you expand that. And then we know that this has to equal 3, and this one has to equal the 12, if this equation is true for all values of x. So then we can just um, solve these two equations simultaneously. We've got a plus b equals 3, and 2a minus b equals 12. If I just add those two equations, I will get 3a equals 15, so a equals 5, and then you can plug that back into there and get b equals negative 2. So that tells you that you can write um, the original one, you can rewrite this as, so a was 5, 5 over x minus 1, and b was negative 2. So just plugging those values into there. Now that's one way to do it. Another way to do it, which is often easier, is to think about what, um, what would happen if, if x was a particular value. For example, if x is 1, that's a really useful one to consider, because that's going to make that equal to 0. So let's just, let me just get rid of that. If x equals 1, Remember, this has to be true for all values of x, so it's okay to just pick a particular value. So if x equals 1, this becomes 15. That's 3, so this is 3a, and then this bit is just 0. And then that allows you to solve that for a. And then we could say, if we want this bit to be 0, so that we're just left with an equation involving b, we can say, let x equal negative 2, because that's going to make this 0. So what happens then? That's negative 6, that becomes just 6, that bit's 0, and this is negative 3b. 
and then solve that for b equals negative 2. Often this method is easier. So you just pick whatever values of x make these bits 0, and then that allows you to solve for a and b. All right, I'm going to go through an example. Let's say we want to integrate x plus 5 over x squared minus 4x. Now, integration isn't the only reason you'd want to use partial fractions, but it, it is one of the main reasons. Um, so, first thing you want to do is take the x squared minus 4x and factorize that. So that becomes um, x times x minus 4. You just fake, take out the, uh, the common factor of x. And then what that means is that we can represent this as something over x plus something else over x minus 4. So let's just work out what happens if you add these two. So we make a common denominator, multiply this one on top and bottom by x minus 4 and this one by x. So you get a times x minus 4 plus b times the x over x squared minus 4x. So that just means that we want this to be equal to this for any value of x. So let's see if we can figure out what a and b need to be. Um, another way that you could do this actually is you could just multiply both sides of this equation by the x squared minus 4x and that would give you this. Or you can just take it from here and then ignore the denominators or well, like cancel the denominators on both sides. Okay, so we've got that. Now, um, one method to figure out a and b is to like group the x's together, group the, um, the constant terms. So we get a plus b times x minus 4a. And because we've got that this has to equal x plus 5, if you think of that as being like 1x plus 5, because that's the same as that, we want the a plus b to be 1 and negative 4a has to be 5. So you can just solve those equations. That'll give you a is negative 5 on 4 and b will be, well, you've got the negative 5 on 4 plus b equals 1, so just move that across and you get b equals 9 on 4. So that's one way to do it. Um, another way to do it is to say, well, what we could do is let x equal 0. And then on this side of the equation, you've got 5. And on this side of the equation, that bit is, sorry, on this side of the equation, we've got negative 4a, and this bit is 0. So that gives you a is negative 5 on 4. And then you could say, like, make this bit 0, so let x equal 4, and then that gives you 9 equals that bit 0, and that's um, 4b, and that gives you b equals 9 on 4. And then if you did want to use those results to integrate that, um, that fraction, you can just rewrite it like that, and then this will become negative 5 on 4 ln x when you integrate it, and this one is 9 on 4, ln x minus 4. Now this question is from the 2014 New South Wales HSC Extension 2 exam. And um, previously I've just been doing ones where it's just a constant up there. But if you've got, um, where well, you've got a quadratic that you can't factorize any further, then you're actually going to have like a bx plus c kind of thing up here. So, but it's, it's, it's a similar principle. you just got to say, um, let, let's work out what these make when you add them up. So you get a times x squared plus 1 plus, so multiply that one on top of 1 by x, you get x, bx plus c, over that. Or instead, you can just multiply both sides of the equation by that. And that gives you 5x squared minus x plus 1 equals all of that. Okay, so the two methods you can use to do this, you can say, um, like, let's expand all of this and then group the, the x squareds and the x's and everything. And 
So we've got an ax squared and a bx squared. A, okay. So we know that this bit has to be 5, and this bit has to be the negative 1, and this bit has to be the 1. So then, straight off the bat, we've got a equals 1 and c equals negative 1. And then we've got um, 1 plus b equals 5, so b equals 4. So that's one method. Um, you can actually use the other one in this case. It's just, it's going to use complex numbers. But what you can do, so looking at this, we could let x equal 0. And that'll get rid of all this bit. And we just get that 1 equals, uh, that bit's just 1, so 1 equals a. And then we could decide to have x squared be negative 1, so that this is 0. Um, so that bit's going to be negative 1, so we've got negative 5. And then x will actually be i. And then that bit's 0. Over here we've got the bx squared, so that's negative b, because x squared is negative 1. And then we've got cx, and x is i, so that's ci. And then you can just equate the real and imaginary parts. So this is negative 4 minus i. So the negative b is the negative 4, so b equals 4. And the c is the negative 1, so c equals negative 1. So I actually think the first method was easier in this case because we didn't have to use complex numbers, but often this method is easier. Here's a similar question from the 2015 exam. So let's just multiply both sides by the x times x squared plus 2. We get 1 equals a x squared plus 2 plus x times the bx plus c. So we can say this is ax squared plus 2a plus bx squared plus cx. And then let's group. Um, we've got a plus b times x squared plus cx plus 2a. And you can think of the 1 as being 0x squared plus 0x plus 1. So that tells you that this bit has to be 0, this bit is 0, and this bit is 1. So then you can say a is a half, c is 0, and if a plus b is 0 and, and a is a half, then b will be negative a half. Or we can use the other method. We could say, um, let's start with x equals 0, just to get rid of that bit. So let me just erase this so it's not distracting. Um, so if x is 0, then we just get 1 equals 2a, which gives a is a half. And then we could say, let's make this bit 0. So let's make x squared be negative 2. And again, that's going to result in complex numbers, but that's OK. Uh, so we get 1, and that bit's 0. We've got a bx squared, so that's negative 2b. And then it's going to be... Um, if x squared is negative 2, then x will be root 2i. So we've got c root 2i. And then um, just equate real and imaginary components. So the imaginary component of this is actually 0. So that means that this has to be 0. So that gives you c equals 0. And we also have that that has to be 1. So b will be negative a half. There were also questions involving partial fractions in the 2016 and 2017 exams. I've already covered those in other videos, so check those out if you haven't already. All right, that's it for this video. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions about partial fractions or about maths in general. And remember to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.